Uh, another cold morning. Uh, getting ready to get started out here. Uh, this this bus is coming along nice. Uh, let's see if I can get this. Uh, let's see if I get this camera turned around. Oh, okay, I don't know how to do it. I lied. I can't do it. There we go. Uh, it may not look like we got a lot done, but this right here was a monumental undertaking. <laughs> Um, it was frozen in the ground. The ground is hard as a rock. Uh, you can see by that tire how deeply it was. Um, and we have it actually above ground level now, but we need to be able to drive it off of there. Uh, the holes were pretty deep. Larry was a huge help with that yesterday. Um, I didn't even know he was coming. He just sent me a message when he was a few minutes away. Uh, we're gonna get the batteries in it this morning. They were supposed to stop and buy, they were supposed to bring a heater, but they didn't. They forgot like a torpedo heater. So they're gonna stop and get one. Um, and then uh, we can have a torpedo heater pointing at the engine for a while while we're working on it too. It's going to help warm things up. They're going to get an extension cord and I'm going to run an extension cord from my bus over here to this bus. We can actually plug in the block warmer so we can heat the coolant internally too. All that's going to help it start easier and run better. Um, we're going through the oil baths. We've got them getting cleaned out. Uh, as you can see, we got about another maybe an inch of snow. Um, I left my table out because I thought nobody's going to steal it, but I didn't think it was going to get snow on it. Um, yeah, it's uh, it's cold. It's 20, I think it's 24 degrees this morning, but it's going to get up to 29, I think it said. Uh, uh, we put five gallons of diesel in it yesterday, and they're going to stop and get another five gallons of diesel, diesel this morning. Um, I just got to get the rack put back together. It was nighttime and I didn't want to start losing parts at night. Um, yeah, so you see we got this side up out of the ground too. Ready to drive out of there. Um, yeah, easily sunk 10 inches into the ground. Um, maybe, maybe more when you figure how high it is right now. So it was hard to get, get everything up in there. Uh, that low profile jack though, that thing was a lifesaver. And in the back, it won't be nearly as hard because there's room for a person to get under there with a the jack right now. Um, this will just take, you know, and it's only sunk in about maybe two or three inches back here, but we still don't want to try and drive it out of there. They, they don't like even a two inch hole. They do not like. Um, uh, everybody's supposed to show up here about nine. It's about 8.30 right now. I'm just going to get a little early start, getting this stuff back together. Go ahead and get the rack loaded in. We gotta get some bungee cords now that the front end is up in the air. These rear doors want to swing shut. This one has a hook on it. Oh man, this bus is just cold. Touching cold metal. I got gloves on. Um, but unfortunately, I gotta take them off because my hands are already numb because of my neck and back issues. So by the time, you know, my loss of sensation with my hands, uh, you add gloves to it. Like yesterday, Kelly handed me my, my Apple, uh, my ear pods, and I didn't even know they were in my hand. Um, I couldn't feel them at all. That, that's how bad the, the sensation is, right? You know, add a glove to it then. And I was actually squeezing it between my thumb and my forefinger. It's not, it was just laying in the palm of my hand. The bus had coolant in it already. We only added about three gallons to it, which is a good sign. Usually something at the bottom, you know, heats and contraction cycles causes a hose to leak and then everything leaks out whatever point that is. But if it was only three gallons low, my guess is it was somewhere up in here that it, that it was leaking. So that's good. <coughs> Excuse me. I got the filters cleaned out um, there, and then I got the other ones are all scrubbed out, ready to go. Um, the oil that was in them, man, it was so thick. It, it, had, it had had some water content in it because it was actually congealed and then hard, a little bit hard. But uh, anyways, having that torpedo heater, if they go get that this morning, blowing at this engine will help the fuel heat up, the fuel lines, the fuel filters, all that stuff. And then it's going to get up to, like I said, 29, so pretty close to the freezing point of water. Um, hopefully it doesn't make too much of a mess back here, melting off this snow. I got my long underwear on and two pairs of sweatpants, three pairs of socks. I got those toe warmer things in my, in my feet, uh, on my socks. And then, uh, two, two hoodies, two long sleeve shirts and a t-shirt on. So I, I wasn't cold really out here yesterday. Uh, my face is a little cold. I can cover it up with this. I got, there's a thing on my, I got my little my hat that I picked up at, at Walmart and uh, it kept my head real warm. So anyways, I'm gonna try and get this rack on before they get here and then uh, 
hopefully in about another two hours, uh, we'll be turning this thing over and, and trying to get it to start. There is a problem with the air system. I tried airing it up with my compressor yesterday and I couldn't get it to build over like 30 PSI. Um, so there's either a leak that my compressor couldn't overcome, which that's very possible. Um, or there's a, a valve open up front or something, but I couldn't hear any air escaping from it. So anyways, let me go rustle up some bungee cords and then I'll get started here. I'll try to shoot as much video as I can of what's happening today, but um, I, don't, I don't really want Kelly to be out here too much in this cold weather. Look at all those little Charlie Brown Christmas trees there. <laughs> Especially like this little guy in the back. That's a, uh, that's pretty, pretty damn cold. Okay, I'm getting the rack put back in. <clears throat> These are just loose down here for right now. And then uh, I'm gonna put the ones on the other side. A swivel really makes it nice, or universal joint. Um, it's hard to get to on the other end because you've got the rack rod and all that stuff kind of in your way over here. And then there's a hole that goes all the way down right in the back there. I like to plug a rag in that hole just in case, so I don't, because it's right next to that. I don't want to fumble that right down into there because that will that's a drain that's a, that goes down into the block and then down to the oil pan. <laughs> it goes through through the cam and yeah, we don't uh we don't want that. So I never want to drop a bolt down there. Okay, I got the the rack moving. This does have that shutdown when it shuts down that the rack locks into the off position. You gotta step on the throttle inside to release it. And then you got full rack movement again. That's nice. Okay. Top end is ready to go. I got the Jake brakes back on. We're gonna hope that that O-ring doesn't leak. I hate to not have a new one to put on there. I didn't realize this bus had Jake's. Um, it would only leak when the Jake's were on, so it would stop that drone from working, but we'll see. I think we're gonna be good there. Uh, emergency stop works. He actually had it closed the whole time it was out here just so no mice or rodents or anything would get down into the engine. That's pretty smart, I thought. Uh, the fuel is shut off, so we'll open that up later. Um, I don't know what time it is. They said they were gonna be here at nine. I think it's after nine. You know, several people asked yesterday or thought that my bus didn't have heat because the way we were dressed. I have multiple heat sources in the bus. One is I have over the road coach heat where I have, there's a big uh, heat heater core up front behind the tires there and a great big blower motor fan. It comes out under my seat and up the sidewalls on both sides. It doesn't work really well though when it's super cold and I didn't, I don't have radiator shutters. So my engine temperature was only getting to about 160 yesterday. And when I turned on the over the road heat, it was taking it down to 150 and it wasn't producing a ton of hot air for me, but I would have rather keep the engine temperature up. So I need to put a piece of cardboard in front of my radiator and that I'll be able to use a little more heat. Uh, I'm not used to driving in 20 degree weather. Uh, we stopped at Walmart and then the bus inside, we were there for like an hour and the inside of the bus was completely frozen by the time we got out of Walmart. So when we did that, it was really cold in there. That's why we were super dressed warm. Uh, but yeah, I have the propane furnace up front too, which we can turn on. And we've got two ducts that go forward for that. So if you notice later in the video, we had less clothes on than we did earlier in the video when it was cold. So once we turned on the propane heat, we were fine. But I only have one tank of propane with me. Wasn't planning on being out in all this and I didn't want to run out here overnight on propane. So we chose to be just slightly cold for you know a three and a half, four hour drive to make sure that we had propane heat all night. So my bus has heat. I need to put some cardboard in front of the radiator uh, just because it was running way too cool and I, I didn't want to steal any more of that engine heat uh, for me up front. Well, I really originally thought that these rear tires were only about two inches in the ground but clearly they're they're a good four inches in the ground. Uh, I gotta get some blocking to get under there. Maybe, hell, maybe five inches. Wow. So I have a six by six under that wheel now, and it's still not up to ground level. So we're getting there. I'm gonna try to fill the tires with air right now, but these crazy aluminum wheels with these really small holes in them are really hard to get your fingers on there to get the tire caps off, which are very tight. Uh, and they're not 180 degrees like they're supposed to be. I gotta find the other one, it's not where it is. Got the oil bath cleaning them out. 
I uh, held it in front of the heater or the exhaust of my uh, generator for a while to melt all the ice and everything out of them. The pie tins are frozen in there, um, and the, I couldn't get them out last night either, so it's not fresh from the snow. I had them upside down out here in the snow, but all those mouse turds and dead bugs and stuff, it's mostly mouse turds. I just gotta keep cleaning them out. I got the ice to come out of there by holding that in front of the exhaust of the generator. That one was the one that was totally frozen in there, all that water just turned to ice and had it sealed up in there. Now I can go get it cleaned out. Whew. Cold weather. I mean, I never have to deal with stuff like this when it's warm. <laughs> Water doesn't get hard. That's going to be our block warmer for this morning. Just got one more corner to lift up out of the dirt. Uh, I can't run the actual block warmer in the block. Uh, we've got a 100 foot extension cord and my generator doesn't like running 100 feet of that with plus the 15 amps or whatever it is that it is um, so I can well that torpedo heater will do a good enough job over there it's 150,000 BTUs that'll heat it up probably faster honestly so um, I've been filling the tires with air and we're getting there don't take any pictures of me please. Hang on, I'm for you. Uh, well those, those folks look clean you guys gotta wash this before you load hey, it. Hey, I loaded it by myself at 5.30 yesterday morning. Why didn't you wash it before you loaded it? Because I didn't. Well, Stan only told me he wanted paper. one battery, but I thought I'd be nice and bring a one that I had. Well, that's the first time you didn't listen to Stan, which puts us ahead of the game. We were talking. Well, then he's sad, he's been crying. It's too cold for him.
another thing. It's starting to build air. Engine's running. Watch the air pressure. So we're at 120, you're holding it down, the brake is held, air pressure is holding. Release. <sighs> Mash it to the floor hard. Hopefully they're freeing up there. Okay. <sighs> Alright, so we have nothing blocking this. Let's get the trailer out of the way. We're gonna try to move it a few feet and see what happens, alright? So put it in gear, just, we're gonna roll. Turn this way a little bit. Come a little bit, come on, keep coming. You didn't go three feet yet. There you go, stop right there, perfect. Putting a driver mirror on it now, so we can actually drive it, but it does roll, start, stop. Going forward good. Uh, brakes are working, they're holding pressure, we're filling tires. Is it too cold out here for you, Phil? Hi folks, <laughs> guess where we are? In the middle of nowhere. <laughs> you never know where you're gonna find one of these old critters, but we're not letting any of them get away. Look, Phil's got no ass, he froze it off. <laughs> A beauty contest I will not win. <laughs> Tires are all pretty sketchy. That's a steer tire. They're all pre-2008 code. That's one of the drive tires. That's pretty good. That's another steer tire. Driving it. Uh, good job. Yeah. Turn the wheel. Did you reverse work for We never tried it. Really rolling at all unless he's stepping on the brake. Reverse works. Great check.
right, this is it. Uh, Silver Size is coming out of the woods. We got our chase truck here with our tools. After two days of working on this thing in the woods, Scott Crosby, John Beckstrom, Phil Epstein, Larry out of Duluth. Scott with his silver side. David, the former owner of the silver side. So we're going to take the bus out and up to uh, fuel station, get some more fuel put in it, and then we'll take off for Hibbing. More later. up and head into Hibbing. Well, it took the temperatures and all of his hubs and brakes and everything looked good. But no brakes are hanging up and hub temperatures were all only about 35 degrees. So I might get too close to a mining wheel down here. But I'm not blocking traffic too much. You're clear this way. starting to rattle again with the cold weather. to the floor. This feels really stiff in the cold weather. I, I guess it's the, the oil and those shocks up front. It just feels weird.
I just want it on record that I told Scott not to follow so close so when that snow gives way and nails us, but he doesn't listen. when it all flies at us.
run miners from the town out to the mine. I think they started with a car and then maybe a truck that they sort of made into a bus-like thing. And I think they mine like iron ore, but it's a it's really low-grade iron ore that Oh, this kind of special process. I don't remember what it is. You can look it up. Do a donut. We are here at the Hibbing Museum, Hibbing, Minnesota. 
Gene Nicolelli Bus Origin Center. Is it going inside? Yeah, it's going in this building. Really shocked the reverse solenoid works all on its own. We didn't have to do anything to it. friends. This is a nice motorhome. Check it out. Pretty cool, huh? This is John's. For a painted one, it's nice.
trucks are all over? Yeah, all these trucks are here, hundreds out here. turn than a 90 degree turn heading back the other way whatever that is i think it's an acute angle because we're turning less than 90 so it's like a 45 i don't know what i'm talking about i gotta give up on the math i don't know what i'm doing here i can't tell if that's just wet
past a car that was spun off into the ditch. A bunch of cops headed on the road the other way, emergency vehicles. Everybody's going about 30 miles an hour in a 70. They must be doing it for a reason. Well, here comes somebody who thinks they can go faster than everyone else. No problem. the rest area better than the road itself. They definitely need trucks out treating the roads tonight. Past more cars in the ditch. Looks like this goes on for about 15 miles before it clears up. There's not more vehicles here. I can't believe that the rest stop's not full. I thought it would have been full too. 